Kiev is land. Land is Kiev. Kislev and proverb when the winter czars arrived Sabaton and then they all fucking died perhaps someday, but not today. Archaean and Akiel general trading barbs after the above line Kiel is the northernmost civilized state in the old world, and the first line of defense against the hordes of chaos that regularly spill out of Norska to the far north. Historically, Kiel is the result of the intermingling of main tribal confederations, the native Ungols of the north, the Gospoders in the south, and the long dead Ropsman tribes. The former two are in fact the offshoots of the Kurgan tribes of the northeast. To this day, the Ungols maintain good relationship with those chaos marauders, who have such wonderfully well thought out names such as Dolgan, Kazag and Kull. In case you can't tell, Kilv is like Tsarist Russia, but only in the weak, decadent south, in the strong, manly north. It actually turns into Mongolia, Poland and the Turkic countries, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, ETC, and the Kurgans who dwell east of the Norsemen are basically Siberians. In essence, Kiev is a fantasy version of Russia with dollops of every other Eastern European country because normies can't tell the difference. It's also named after Kievan Rus, as in the old Russian kingdom and the current capital city of Ukraine. All GW did was tack on two letters in the middle of Kiev. Actually, Kiev is a month in the Hebrew calendar, which makes sense, considering that millions of Ashkenazi Jews lived in Eastern Europe for centuries until World War II. In the 1980s when Kiev was created, Russia and Ukraine were both republics with the Asa. Also, Kiev is no more according to the whole return of Nagash thing GW had planned. At last. Archeon has done that which Napoleon, Hitler, the USA and the EU could only dream of, the annihilation of Russia. During the reign of Katerina, they had a secret police called the Czechist, Herder, whose job it was to root out, torture, and execute anyone with whiff of dissatisfaction or criticism regarding that Serena's rule about them, often justifying it with Marchaos cults. So, that's fun. History of Kiev. Kiev. The extent of Kislevite diplomacy long before the empire was founded, the Ungol people had populated the land that would be called Kiev. They lived alongside several other humans tribes in the area and held a border with the tribe to which Sigma belonged to, the Tutogen. When Sigma began his campaign to drive out the violent Norseite tribe and unite various people into his future empire he inadvertently drove the Norseite toward Ungol territory. Not liking the Norseite the Ungols decided to aid Sigma against them and they succeeded in driving the Norseite toward the land of Norska where the violent tribe would settle down and give rise to the modern Norskan people. In the wake of this campaign, the Ungol and Sigma's fledgling nation would promise to help each other if one or the other was invaded which created a bond between the two lands which lasts till this day. Unfortunately for the Ungols their reign over the lands of Kiel was not to last. In 1494 Ike another tribe called the Gospoda lead by the Khan Queen Miska the Slaughterer fled across the eastern steppes and away from the encroaching chaos wastes at the beckoning of a spirit called the Ancient Widow. The native Ungol people tried tried to resist the newcomers but were no match for the wealth, arms, and magic of the Gospoda tribe. The Ungols then tried to appeal to the Empire for aid but the Empire at this time was going through a civil war and could not help them. Without the aid of the Empire the invaders would conquer the Ungol settlement of Prague in 1497 Ike and began to carve out a kingdom that grew in size as the Gospoders used the Linsk River to launch incursions further into Ungol and later Imperial territory. Although Imperial forces eventually drove the Gospoda off Empire lands the tribe was successful in forcing the Ungol to accept Gospoda rule and would eventually agree to a defensive treaty with the Empire. Around 1524 Eichmuska abruptly abdicated her position of leadership after receiving an apocalyptic vision of a future where she would once again be needed to lead her people to salvation. The infamous Ice Witch and Queen would disappear into the north promising to return but not before passing her throne and magic blade Fearfrest to her daughter. Under the leadership of Miska's daughter Shoika, the first true Serena, the Gospoda would then build themselves a new capital city for their kingdom called Kiel of in 1527 Ike which would eventually lend its name to all the kingdom's inhabitants. Following this, 
the Ungols would settle on the northern border of the modern-day Kiev nation where their people still reside and mainly serve as the kingdom's first line of defense against chaos marauders. The south of Kiev is considered more civilized and even has some influence from the empire. Despite this acrimonious beginning over the ensuing 750 years, the two people would basically intermingle to the point that now almost everyone sees themselves as people of Kiev first and whatever tribe they came from second. For most of the nation's history, the Gospoda people held virtually all the power in the nation with almost all of the nobles being Gospoda and the Tsars and Serenus all being descended from the first Gospoda Khan Queen. This began to change later on largely because the current Tsarina Catherine Boka began uplifting more and more Ungol men into leadership roles to further tighten her grip on the nation. Given her strength of character and the magic power she wields, some people have begun to whisper she may be Miska's reincarnation. According to various sources including second ed of Warhammer fantasy roleplay in the 15th issue of Games Workshop's Citadel magazine, their military consisted of the following. On the magic front there are Ice Witches, an exclusively female group that wields the power of, well Ice Magic, which interestingly does not draw power from the winds of magic and Hag Witches. Another all-female group, who bind the spirits of the land to themselves rather than use the winds in order to cast curses, predict the future, cleanse stuff, banish malevolent spirits, and give themselves a melee combat boost by turning themselves into a monster called the form of the Ancient Widow. Due to a legend dating back to the age of Serena Shoika stating that a male magic user would appear and taint ice magic forever keel of his banned male magic users entirely. Any male magic users discovered by the state are either killed, forced to undergo a ritual that removes their magic at the cost of turning them into a husk of their former selves, or forced to flee to the colleges of magic and the empire. Meanwhile, on the conventional army side, Kiel's forces consist of Kossas, the Axeman Archer infantry of the standing army of Kiel recruited from any who can pass fitness and correspondingly has an excellent reputation on the field of battle along with a terrible one off of it. Streltsy, an elite infantry subset of the Kossas first formed after a Kiel noble viewed the gunpowder portion of the Empire Trifecta put a chaos horde to rout and decided to aid their halberds and hand gunners. Streltsy are literally just the real Russian Streltsy but with more brotherhood and loving their gun so much that it's said they might find someone sleeping with their wife to be less offensive than shooting their handgun without their permission. Ungol horse archers, auxiliaries from the northern tribes which are basically Huns or Mongols in their natural state for battle. Winged lancers, which are totally the polished winged hussars but based from their settlements rather than part of the standing army and wear wings on their back with the explanation of them causing an unnerving sound as they ride being adapted from a common theory to the real winged hussars. And finally the Griffin Company, the most prominent and heaviest company of winged lancers ever which is comprised of noblemen who fletch their wings with griffin feathers and commonly act as mercenaries while not defending Kiel from chaos invasion. They come down right close to an actual imperial knight order. For extra firepower and to deal with enemy fortifications the army of Kiel has access to mortars and Urugan cannons which are basically Kiel's version of the empire's great cannons. Also adding a bit of extra cool factor to their army. At least one example of bear cavalry is cannon according to WFRP, with the prior to current Tsar Boris Bokho riding into battle on a bear that was tamed after they defended one another from a wolf pack attacking them while Boris had tried to break and tame the bear more conventionally. Interestingly the same role playing book that introduced bear cavalry also confirmed the fact that Kiel was once ruled by a Lamian vampire Serena named Catherine the Bloody, no relation to the current Serena around Magnus the pious time until she was ousted by a mortal relative Tserevich Pavel who got a vampire hunting group named after him for this feat. Prior to this more recent mention, the vampire Tserena thing had only been mentioned in the Vampire Genevieve books. In order for the warriors of chaos to get to the Empire on foot they have to go through Kiev. So the horde that shows up in the Empire is actually a hell of a lot smaller than when they marched out. Kiev has been on the forefront of the chaos waste since its inception and not once has the nation fallen. 
That basically means these guys have balls of steel on par with the Imperial Guard. At least that's how it was until the end times when Katarin got killed. Archaeon's troops destroyed all but one Kiel city and he then proceeded to obliterate the whole world. Geography of Kiev. Kiev, unlike the most WFB nations, is a pretty unified and centralized country. Most of it consists of pretty warm steppes in the south and cold wasteland tundras in the north, although forests are still present in some areas. Administratively, Kiev is divided into oblasts. Southern Oblast, the least hellholeish region of the country. It's the main farming area of Kiev, with many orchards and forests. In fact, some of the travelers can easily assume it's a part of the empire without even knowing the truth. Ethnically almost all of the population here, if not all, is Gospoda. Kiev, large and prosperous capital of the realm. Situated on the banks of River Erskoy, this city is youngest of main three Kislevite cities, as it was built by Tsarina Shoika less than thousand years before the end times. It is a residence of Tsar that has never been taken by enemies, even in great war against chaos. Kiel city sits in the middle of the trade routes from Old World to Eastern lands, and is very influenced by other cultures, especially Imperial, Western Oblast the heart of Kislevite trade. It's not as developed as its southern neighbor Oblast, and has to deal with chaos invasions sometimes. Most of it is a steppe. Ungols are a minority here. Irengrad, the main port of Kiel which in Old World the trade is second only to Marienburg, was Ungol capital before the arrival of Gospodars. It sits in the delta of River Linsk, and, unlike rich capital with enormous stone walls, is built with wood and has two stories buildings at best, quite obviously based on street. Petersburg Petrograd Leningrad, Eastern Oblast, pretty similar to her previous one, with steps dominating the landscape. However, it's much more dangerous to live there, as greenskins and chaos marauders are raiding the land constantly. It's also a fairly mixed region, with Gospodars and Ungols being equal in population and even having some Ungol dominated cities. Prague, the northernmost main Kislevite city, that is also the most defended against chaos. It is also the oldest one, surpassing Erengrad and Kiel of an age. It was badly ravaged in Great War and had to be rebuilt from scratch while also combating chaos taint. Pretty much the shittiest main city to live, which is why all of the population are bad as Ungols, while it is defended well from the outside threats. Chaotic mutations and vampiric families deal on the inside. Northern Oblast, the most brutal region. It has almost no agriculture due to her constant raids from troll country, and is entirely covered in cold steppes and icy wastelands. Settlements here are pretty rare, with no big towns at all. Ungols are a majority. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Politics of Kiev. Like its inspiration, Kiev is an authoritarian absolute monarchy. That said. It fortunately has more of Peter and Catherine the Great than Nicholas II. Starting with the reign of Tsar Boris Boka, Kiev went through a major political and religious reformation, which is still ongoing even after his death and the coronation of his daughter. In those reforms the Tsar's power, which was severely weakened after the Great War against Chaos, was restored, turning the country into an absolute monarchy, which is quite impressive seeing how most of the southerners are still stuck in feudalism. Also the great orthodoxy was introduced, which we'll get to later. Katarin's Kiev, however, 
went into a different direction. She started promoting ice witches into power, severely downplaying the role of the religion, and also began uplifting more and more on goal men into leadership roles originally meant for Gospeda to further tighten her grip on the nation. Due to their current patriarch Kostaltin, who like most other Kislevite priests hates magic and considers it abomination of chaos, isn't quite happy, and if Kiel didn't have a bigger threat, it would collapse in a civil war. Thankfully, they are both not idiots and can set aside their differences to protect Kiel from demon vikings. Not demon huns though, as the end times showed. Religion in Kiel. They'd call me a heretic for saying it, but the great orthodoxy isn't about gods any longer yes. They perform the rituals and lead the services to Urson. Daz and Tor. But why do you think Father Bear has gone silent? They only care about power and cloak that ambition in faith. Unknown heretic. Not long before being blamed by the Kislevite secret police like the Empire to the south the people of Kiel have multiple deities with the main one being the cult of Urson the father of bears. There's also the ancient widow an ancient spirit imprisoned by chaos which some speculate is the same as the law goddess Arianka. It was she who first drew the Gospeders to Kielv and helps the ice witches with their ice magic. Other common gods in Kielv are Daz the god of fire and the sun. Daz is underling Kalita the god of merchants. Tor the axe wielding god of warriors and lightning. And almost blatant Thor Ripoff. Salayak the goddess of healing. Basically a more stern motherly version of Shalaya and the more well-known gods Tal and Ulrich. Remote settlements in the extreme north like Tungask worship the Kislevite pantheon plus some gods who may or may not be facsimilars of the chaos gods, as a result of Norse and Kurgan influence that far north. According to the new Total War, Warhammer Law, now the worship in Kiev is regulated by the institute known as the Great Orthodoxy, which was founded by Tsar Boris himself. His motivation to create it was to help in the reunification of the country after the Great War against Chaos and to prevent some tribes and or more civilized villages from worshipping Chaos. The Orthodoxy, as the Kiev Mechanics post shows, recognizes Urson, Daz, Tor and Salayak with Ursan priests being quite obviously at the top of their hierarchy. In theory, the orthodoxy was created to help consolidate and centralize the influence and authority of Kiel's various religious sects, thus theoretically being even more unified than the empire's competing cults. Tabletop. 6th edition Erdit during 6th Kiel got hold of its own mini army book that was designed to be used in tandem with other armies such as the Empire and Britannia. As a result there were only 7 units available in the army, with 2 of them being special characters, 1 being a generic hero and 3 generic units being cavalry, leaving Cossas as the only core infantry unit available. In addition to this there were no real army special rules. Since each unit has a specific special rule that applied to that unit, such as Kossa Steady in the ranks and Winged Lancer's Glorious Charge. Overall the Kiel of Army relied heavily of cavalry to be the hammer and skirmishers, while the relatively flexible, but lightly armored, read, no armor, Kossa's acting as both ranged and frontline units, and while the lack of any artillery units, Heavy infantry or magic users outside of Katarin meant that Kiel was ill-equipped to deal with most other armies. These rules were designed to be used as an allied contingent to an army like the Empire, which could bring all the cannons and full plate you could want. You would think that getting the beginnings of an army and models would be a good reason for Kiel to be turned into a fully-fledged army. But apparently GW was more busy making terrible space marine kits and giving Thorpe and Ward free reign to fuck up the rules and fluff. So this never happened and Kiel remained as a weird one stroke four army for the rest of Warhammer Fantasy's existence with no hope of actually being recognized as a full faction. At least until Warhammer. The Old World. Announced in early 2020 it was confirmed Kiel is returning in Warhammer. The Old World is one of the playable factions, meaning it took two and a half editions and the death and reincarnation of Warhammer Fantasy for them to get fleshed out into a full army. So far most of the stuff we've seen has come from Total Warhammer 3, which GW has confirmed to be showing off stuff that they plan to be in the Old World, 
and concept art which shows that Kiel seems to be undergoing a bit of a redo and re-establishment as some of the older fluff from old editions. War Master and Warhammer Fantasy roleplay seems to be at least getting partially ritzconned or reworked. For example the old war wagons seem to have been replaced by war sleds which are pulled by bears instead of horses and the addition of the ice guard who are an order of ice maidens that serve as bodyguards for the ice which is being new and reworked concepts of older fluff. In addition the Russian mess of Kiel has been thrown a bit into overdrive with bears and ice being pushed a bit hard for some people's likes stating that it's flanderizing the faction a bit with things like the war sled and the elemental bear being the things people point at as being a bit too over the top with the bear and ice stuff. They have bear pulled artillery while there is a small division between how people feel about this new Kiev. Most people find the more grounded additions such as the Tsar Guard and the updates to the Winged Lancers as more faithful updates to what Kiel should be and GW does have time to bring the other things more in line with what people want. Though expecting good things out of GW, and for the Warhammer fanbase to agree on anything in even minute details, or just not go into inane arguments at all, is a bit like expecting it to rain upwards. Also, this is Warhammer where realism is supposed to give way to rule of cool. If someone complains about bears pulling artillery on ice sleds, then they are clearly and obviously in the wrong. Total War, Warhammer 3, as of February 3rd. Kiel has been confirmed to be one of the core races in Warhammer 3. The announcement has come after a series of teasers hinting at the coming of the four Chaos Gods, and saying that only the Bear God Urson can save the world now. An image leak also shows what appears to be a Kiel of army fighting a cornet horde. The first game trailer for Warhammer 3 revealed Kiel as one of the main factions. This suggests that once again Kiel will have to do all the heavy lifting in saving the Warhammer world. Cathay will be helping, which is not a criticism. In fact, the whole having to act as a bulwark for the world thing is a plot point at least in the Kiel campaign, as according to a new cinematic trailer one Kislevite boyar by the name of Slavin Kearns apparently got sick of having to protect the world and went full-blown heretic by joining up with Korn's forces. The new gameplay trailer has shown off a lot more bear cavalry with a bear riding patriarch of Urson, a giant ice bear elemental, a cannon called Little Grom being pulled on magically summoned ice by two ice bears. I'm sensing a theme here HBU. Shown off. Katarin was also shown along with the Tsar Guard, Kossas with a new pike variant, Ungol Horse Archers, the Winged Lancers and the Griffin Legion, the Ice Guard, and the Streltsy who wield gun axes now instead of their old axe and handgun combo like the real world counterparts. Later after release we discovered they also had two kinds of gun armed war sleds pulled by bears, a magical snow leopard and a new cavalry unit in the form of the saber-wielding Kosovite dervishes, which is an incredibly stupid name for a unit that's from a faction based on Russia instead of say, I don't know, Araby also it turns out Kiev is even more important to the plot than even the trailers let on. Seems everything got started when Urson got kidnapped by Blacker after a battle 7 years prior to the game's start. Without his roar to break the ice and usher in spring Kiev starts to starve and descent begins to break out throughout the kingdom. In desperation that Serena sends out the ungol descended Prince Yuri Barkov, who according to her short story is actually both a childhood friend and her secret lover. Certainly explains why she started to let the Ungols into the nobility. Yuri sets out to find Urson accompanied by his brother Jerick and some forces and guided by a voice he thinks is Urson's. However after picking up some cursed artifacts from some chaos warriors and getting mind warped by some chaotic knowledge Yuri goes mad with power and kills his own brother so as to summon some cornered demon to aid him in killing a traitorous boyar and opening a path to Urson. After reaching the Forge of Souls Yuri discovers a captive Urson, but also learns the voice that lead him here was not Urson but Balaka who's been living as an incorporeal shadow since he pissed off the Chaos Gods. The first demon prince then proceeds to goad Yuri into wounding Urson with the demon pistol Yuri took from the dead Boyar. Balaka then uses the blood from Urson's wound to regain a physical form. Yuri after nearly dying gets turned into a demon prince called Godslayer by the Chaos Gods 
A massive storm of magic breaks out throughout the world and now all the various in-game factions are rushing, for one reason or another, to get to us and before Balaka can use the power from the bear's imminent death to become a chaos god of shadows. So grab your vodka, mount your bears, not like that Boris, and start blaring Sabaton on full blast. Kielv has arrived collecting Kielv. In Warmaster, Kielv used to have both an official army list and a nice line of miniatures. In WHFB, things are a little more complicated. While there is no official army book for them, aside their supplements in the 4th and 6th edition, there is also the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay book Realm of the Ice Queen. There are good fan-made ones which do include bear cavalry which in turn makes all other human armies seem pathetic. Except for the Warriors of Chaos, who are mythificking Vikings. Honestly that's easily debatable. These manly fuckers fight giant chaos monsters with a bow, rocks, and an axe. And you think they ask for help. There are even a few official models made for them and a small white dwarf list for them but that is out of date. Additionally, the privateer press line of CADA models for War Machine give off the nice fantasy Russian look. If going only for infantry, with the Doom Reavers, Cossite Woodsmen, and Grey Lord models. If you need bears, you can grab their Brun and Lug set. Actual winged Huzars models are also hardly rare from other historically based games. With Kiel's roster being fleshed out between the collaborative efforts of GW and Car for Total War, Warhammer and the upcoming Old World Tabletop Revival. Kiel will officially have tabletop representation in the coming years, if you don't mind GW's undoubtedly steep prices, of course.